Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Well, we're going to talk about how to deal with the speaking part of the IELTS today. Um, I know that some of you like to do exams, so we're just going to talk about how to do that, what the best way is to pass the speaking part. The IELTS exam in the speaking part, as you all know, there's three parts. The first asks you very general questions, which require fairly short answers, but there's still room to get comparatives in there. So if they say, how did you get here today? You could say, well, compared to yesterday, the weather's nicer today, so I came by foot. Remember, this is your big chance to show them the best of your English. And you can only show them the best of your English if you really use different tenses, different idioms, and different bits of speaking. Okay, so in the first part of the eye out, to give just straight answers, how did you get here today by foot? You're not really showing them the best of your English. So a nice comparative, unlike yesterday, for example, it's not raining today. Or there was an opinion came up this morning that it was going to rain, so I decided to come by bus. You see, any of these little things that you can use uh, is much better than just giving a direct yes or no answer. Also on the IELTS, another really good thing uh, for you to try is um, in the part two, to make sure you're using past, present, and future, and also to try as much as you can to turn the question into a story. So let me just give you a few answers. So we'll go through a few IELTS speaking questions. Describe a beautiful place. Remember to say where it is, what you can do there, and how to get there. Okay, now, if you are a bit like me, the question looks like it only needs the present uh, tense. And you would say to yourself, oh, that's an easy question. I like it. There is a beautiful place near my home. It is very nice. You get there by train. Okay, now that answer isn't going to get you very far because you're only showing them the present tense. You have to turn this into a story in order to use the best of your grammar. So let me explain. Let me explain. A better answer would be, well, my grandmother was visiting me yesterday and we decided to go for a walk. We discovered a really beautiful place which is quite close to where I live. Compared to other places, it was very colourful and green. My grandfather said he didn't like it very much, but my grandmother loved it. Okay, so already I've used a comparative, I've used reported speech, I've used the past tense, okay, uh, and I'm going to continue. There were boats with lots of little children playing there. I don't particularly like children, but my grandmother was very happy to sit and watch them. We actually went there by foot, and if I get the chance to go there again, perhaps I'll take the bus, because the weather where I'm living isn't quite so nice. There, I've used a conditional there as well. And then you can use the passive voice if you talk more about things that people like to do there. It is better to go there by tram, for example, because the tram stops right outside. And 
There was a sign which was put up by the organizers, again, more passive voice, which said, be careful of the birds, but we didn't have any trouble there. Okay, and then you can describe how it makes you feel as a way to get more adjectives to describe the place. So if the place makes you feel good, relaxed, happy, that's the ones to use. It's a very happy place and very relaxing. We spent a few quiet hours there, although I had to cover my head so it didn't burn. So you see, already I've used loads of grammar, passive voice, conditional, comparatives, past, and I'm going to use the future as well. When I go back the next time, I must remember to take a hat. So you see, a story is always going to be the best way. Let me give you another example. Describe the most beautiful animal you've ever seen. Well, my grandmother and I were driving through the countryside a few days ago, and I noticed something bright in the sky. It was red with circles. I was a bit confused by it. I thought maybe it was a kite. My grandmother saw it, and she immediately told me it was a special type of bird. Compared to other birds that I've seen in the sky, this one looked very, very different. It looked more like something you would see on a kite design rather than on a bird. It was flying very, very low, but my grandmother assured me that they always do this and that there was nothing to be afraid of. So we stopped the car and we got out and my grandmother said that she was sorry she didn't have her camera with her because if she was able to take a picture, she would have been able to go to the local bird sanctuary or bird rescue center to get the name of the bird. So you see how easy it is to uh, really use a lot of grammar, but if you don't tell a story to answer these questions, then the questions immediately become a little bit more difficult. Yeah, I saw a bird and uh, yeah, it it's nice. Or, um, yeah, but uh, my favorite bird, I don't know, let me think. So you see, to immediately make a story allows you different avenues to express yourself. To use an idiom would be very, very good as well. If you're describing beautiful places, you could say something like, well, my grandfather said that uh, there's nothing quite like it. Nothing quite like it. That's a, a nice idiom we, we often say. Um, another thing that you could say, um, uh, if someone is spending a lot of money, Oh, we saw people spending a lot of money in the souvenir shop. There was one woman in particular. She was spending so much money, she was like a knife going through butter. You know when you take the butter to put on your toast in the morning? That's a nice idiom as well. So that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this. Let's talk again soon, and good luck with the IELTS if you're doing it. Bye.